Hi everyone, Railman28 here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Wrestling with Railman28. Ring the bell please. Thank you. Now let's get right down to this. EWE Fool's Gold. That was a brilliant event I've ever seen. And uh, could, be, could have been improved. Well, yeah. But I have nothing against that. That was obviously a, a good night. It was a good evening event. And it started off really good with Terence Thatcher introducing everything. And he should have been in the ring, really, not not up in the not up in the uh, bit where they control the music and everything. I preferred I preferred um, Terence Thatcher in the ring, really. But there you go. Now the new commissioner is Lewis Basham, the Law Lewis Basham. Boo. Yeah, yeah. As much as I hate him being the commissioner, but I preferred him as a wrestler, really. But there you go. So, what he did was, donk donk all rise, his music came, came into play and he came out, called us uneducated and, uh, same old Basham, saying we're all uneducated, that's when he's wrong, I'm more educated than he is, so there you go, what can I say, he just... Call us names all because we were booing him. He's a bad guy. Well, we've got to boo him. He's a bad guy. Oh, good guy. Possibility. One of them, one way or the other. Then he brought out Fentos, the Entourage, and Jay Morgan, calling them heroes. To be honest, they look like they've walked out of a drug den. <laughs> That's my opinion, anyway. So, yeah, they came out. Fentos looked like he's been in the hen house for too long. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my point of view. And uh, well, Cuban Heat spends too much time in Primark, <laughs> getting trousers instead of wrestling tights. And of course, Jay Morgan buys expensive shirts from Primark. <laughs> there you go. And the only person that had proper wrestling gear on was Fabian Romano. That was it. He had proper wrestling gear on. And Jay Morgan as well. Fentos. Well. Too tall. There you go. Now. During that segment. He brought out Buff Broadside to say goodbye. But. There's a but to this one. Buff Broadside got another job with EWE. As Commissioner's Assistant. That's what the stipulation states. The loser has to be the commissioner's assistant. And that was Buff Broadside for you. To be honest. He wasn't bad, but I preferred him in his colourful suit rather than his black suit, really. He looks better in that. If I do say so myself. Then he brought out Buff brought out Yaya, the Somali warrior, Yaya a leapfrog. And Yaya wanted a new a title opportunity because he didn't get a fair match with the Project Mayhem of Alexander Roth. As you all know, Project Mayhem cost Yaya the match. Like they always do, they cost anyone the match these days. But there you go. But luckily Basham was a fair man. He said, "Okay, you could, you can have another title opportunity if you beat Fentos." Well, that was the first match of the evening. That was all right. First match of the evening, Fentos against Yaya. And that was a good match. And then Basham had to go and strip Arcadius of his EWE Heavyweight Championship, all because Arcadius wasn't there to defend his title. Honestly. He was ill, honestly. If you're ill, you can't defend your title while you're ill, can you? 
obviously you wanted him to lose because he was ill. That was all. But I'm proud of Arcadius as champion. I'm proud of him. No doubt about it. But Bash him out to go and strip him and accused Arcadius of being scared and I knew that was about to tee someone off. And it did. And then as soon as he said that, he's let us all down. We heard the ch ch bow. And that was when Bullet's music kicked in. And we all knew what that meant. And I sit and I sit and I shouted to the wrestlers in the ring. I said, if I were you guys, I'd run. <laughs> that was the, uh, the, the that's, that's what I would do. Run. Because Bullet came down them steps. Everyone thought he was going to come through the curtain, but he didn't. He came down the steps. And then he was marching to the ring like a bear. Oh, God. I, I thought, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, Bullet entered the ring. Because I was sitting at ringside, you see. I was, I was at ringside. And I actually saw Bullet. He was right next to me. And he just marched into the ring. Stood behind Basham like a bear, ready to pounce on him. And then... Bullet just grabbed hit the microphone off of Basham and says, You think I'm going to let you strip my brother of the title? The one title he fought through hell to get off of me? You're sadly mistaken. And then Bullet challenged Basham in order for his brother to keep the title. Obviously that didn't happen. Because Commissioner Basham just stripped him of it. I know Arcadius will not will not like that. He will not like it at all. And then Bullet informed us that Arcadius was suffering more than just pneumonia, suffering from more than just pneumonia. And I thought, oh no. But it can't be helped. I mean. If Arcadius is ill, he can't compete. I mean, if he was well enough for the next show on May 27th, he would have done. But I think Arcadius deserves a raise. Arcadius deserves a raise for what he's done over the past few months. And the past two year, for years. For what he's done. For the, for the wrestling business. Then Bullet Challenge, as I said, Challenge Basham to a fight. Basham said, you want to fight? And then Bullet went, oh yeah. But then Basham had to take the coward's way out and say, you're not going to fight me tonight, Bullet. And I went, oh God, because I was there. And I thought it's official. Bullet versus Basham main event. That would have been the best event I would have seen. And then I had to turn around and say, oh, I thought he had a pair of balls, mate. <laughs> and Basham just looked at me. He just stared down at me. And, went, <laughs> and Bullet had to laugh at that one because I made him laugh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was good. It was good though. But luckily, Bullet had was put in a handicap match. Not with just one person. Not two. Not three. But three people. He's got. He had three people. He was facing the entourage and Jay Morgan. And I thought, oh, he's going to make mince me out of them. Then we went on, and then he said, and then Bullet had to say, Yo, yo, kick Fentos's butt, brother. Which he did, he kicked, kicked his butt. Yo, yo, beated Fentos. Brought the big giant down. Honestly. <laughs> Son count he's been stalked down and that was Yaya. Yaya's got a title opportunity. I thought he was gonna get a rematch with Alexander Roth, but obviously Alexander Roth is being used for something else. And I think I know what it is. I'll tell you in a minute, guys. So he's gonna be up against Ricardo Borg for the light heavyweight championship. Which is okay. It's a fair match. No one's gonna interfere in that match apart. Wait for it. The guy who took Chester. Ricardo Ball's duck. Mini G's dad. As you, I would say. Mini G's dad. I want to know who took him. 
But luckily Yaya got that title opportunity and said to me on Instagram, Don't worry, if that if anyone comes to interfere, I will help Ricardo. We just want a fair match. A fair match is good enough for any of us. Which is true. And um of course the next match after that was Theodore Powers at Double Powers versus Deep Sea Blue. Which was uh, Violet Knight and CJ Rawlings. Now, on that day, it was rec- it was Theodore Powers' birthday, his birthday, and uh, <laughs> Stan Powers wanted everyone to sing Happy Birthday. I was prepared to sing Happy Birthday. We had time to kill, but obviously, to EWE, no. If anyone. If Theodore has to blame anyone for that, blame Basham. Blame him for that. Simple as that. But I know st- double powers are due for character change. They're going to go from bad guys to good guys this time. I know that for sure. Because I gave Theodore powers a present, which I did. From me, personally. From me, personally. Which is good. And he says, thank you very much, now F off. Which was, yeah, it's typical Theodore Powers, really. Typical. But he's a good teacher. He's a good teacher of wrestling. I'll give him that. There you go. And I'll listen to him any day. Even though he's going to tell me to F off all the time. I don't know. What, what can I do? Nothing. Stan Powers is the one I support heavily. His dad I support heavily. Maybe his dad can teach me a thing or two. Then, yeah, the match got underway. Birthday cake in the corner. And I said, are you sure you want to be in this corner? You, you don't want to protect that cake, do you? And I know CJ Rawlings and Violet Knight were guarding that cake. They were in that corner. <laughs> they were in my side of the corner. I thought, should have swapped, mate. I would have cheered for Violet. Which I did. I cheered both teams on. Which is alright, I suppose. But even though when Theodore came out and he put two of his middle fingers up at me, which is typical Theodore, typical, yeah, I took it very well. I ate it, actually. And then, during that match, obviously, things went downhill for the double powers faction. And uh, then went to the splat, <laughs> Violet Knight's face with the cake. And I thought, oh no. I, and I knew it, that was when it was going to go horribly wrong. Violet slipped out. And then... <laughs> and then, boom, it went, in, Ricardo, it went into Theodore's face. <laughs> At least he had some cake then. But he didn't save any for all of us. Typical. But even though he was going to give out goodies, like the um, bald, the bald hat thing, try and get our get us to have girlfriends who love bald men instead of braving the shave, well, I'd brave the shave any day. I mean, as you can see here, guys, I'm going bald a little bit. And I might shave the entire thing off. Really, I might shave the entire thing off. But anyway, and as I said, I will get in the ring eventually, but. Not just yet. I'll start as a ref first. If EWE will let me. I might be a commentator as well. So I want to work alongside Clive Jackson. I want to work alongside him. There you go. Charlie would understand. And Terence Thatcher would understand that. I want to join EWE. So Terence Thatcher. Make some arrangements please mate. Cheers pal. Right. <clears throat> After that match. The ring got cleaned up because it was full of cake. Do you want it being slippery inside the ring, do we? <laughs> Which is alright. Next up, we had Ricardo Borg again defending his title against the Rhino Jack Torino. Which was okay. I'm surprised if I remember that, funny enough. Jack Torino versus Ricardo Borg for the EWE Light Heavyweight Championship. Which is fine. In that match, Ricardo, when he came out of the ring, I feel sorry for him because he di- didn't have Chester alongside him. 
I mean, I could have been in his corner, but no, I was already in his corner, so there you go. And me and, and, me and Mini G were there, so there you go. Mini G came to that. He always goes to every WE event. And Ricardo loves that, so at least he's got a duck too. That looks out for him. Then after that match, Ricardo retained. And of course, the thief came out. With the emoji mask on, black hoodie, black trousers, came out to attack Ricardo, beating him down. And I saw a white wristband with the black stripe on it. And of course, under the mask, I, when the thief came out of the ring, I saw a beard because Twisted the Clown came out to save Ricardo. Good save for Twisted. Well done, Twisted. Came out, saved Ricardo. Ricardo thought it was Twisted teaming up with the other bloke but he weren't he was saving him twisted was saving Ricardo and the other bloke just came out slid out the ring and I s and he looked at me and I saw the beard line underneath the mask it was a beard and I shouted it was a beard the guy has a beard I shouted and Ricardo heard that he heard that someone it someone said the guy had a beard I said that he looked at twisted and he went so it wasn't him after all. It wasn't Twisted after all. No, it weren't. It weren't. No, it weren't. But luckily enough, Ricardo's okay. And we're one step closer. But i got a funny feeling. I don't know who it is. But we'll get to that in a minute. As I said. After that match, we all had a break. I went to go and fill our drinks. And the thing is now, when we go and get our drinks, we have to go to the main bar to get our drinks. The main bar at the Bedford in Ballam. Because I, I, I wanted to go into the open bar that was there, but you have to pay by card instead of by cash. Which is totally wrong in my opinion, really. But never mind. Yeah, I love the I love the, the WE folks. Excuse me. Good, Good way to start it off, really. A good way for me to start off in the family, in the wrestling business. Now, after the break came two more matches, I think. Was it two or three? Or it was two, I think. Well, actually, no, no, it was three. Three matches. Next was Max Gaines, the Jim Watt Max Gaines, versus Raven Kemp. And Raven Kemp, he was from Demon Death Squad. I know, oh, we knew him, so it was good. Max Game was still complaining about, "Why are you cheering him for? You should be cheering me. I'm stronger than I'm stronger. I've been to the gym. <laughs> been to the gym and you become a wrestler, mate. That's some sort of a joke, literally. You got. He always demands respect from everyone." To be honest, I do respect Max Game, but there's a little teeny weeny weeny thing I need to give him advice to. Respect is not just given, Max. It's earned. You have to earn that respect. So if you earn the respect, you get a cheer. If you don't, you get booze. There you go. You don't... Look, you don't just go to the gym just to be in, a re to be in the wrestling industry. No, that's not how it works. You've got to be properly trained at wrestling. Not only do you have to go to the gym every now and then, you have to go directly to a wrestling training centre as well. Which is what I'm going to do. I am going to the gym. I'm going to go back there probably at the weekend, probably on a Sunday or something, just to do my workouts. And then I'll probably end up going to the wrestling industry just to train up. You need proper training before you actually perform in the indies. Literally. That's my advice to Max Kane. So Raven Kemp won that match by pinfall. There you go. And the Theodore Powers match, he tapped out. So he tapped. So Violet made him tap out. Made Theodore tap out, which is all right. Which is good in my opinion. Good in my view anyway. Yeah. So that was the first match after the break. It was Raven Kemp versus Max Kane. Raven Kemp picked up the win by pinfall. There you go. After that came uh, 
Xander versus now it was originally supposed to be Xander versus Damien from Demon Death Squad. They both were supposed to face each other, but unfortunately, Damien had an injury, which was he injured his hand whilst wrestling at another event, so he couldn't wrestle that day, that night. Love Damien, love Brett, love him. Brilliant bloke. Xander had to fight Devious Dunny from Project May. And I knew it was gonna go downhill from downhill from there. Everything went down downhill from there. But Xander managed to pick up the win. But after he won that match, Jacob Sullivan He just came and attacked him with a chair. A steel chair. And I think Xander had sustained an injury during that during after that due to whacking Danny with chopping Danny we couldn't get because it must have injured his hand whilst hitting his vest because Danny has a, a hard vest on which in my honest opinion I didn't think he should have that on that's dangerous anyone doing chops is going to injure their hand it might break their hand a little bit and it possibly it must have injured Xander's hand I think and Xander got attacked and he sustained an injury so he can't be in the um, match this coming this coming Monday which is the 27th he can't be at Monday vs Madness then Jacob Sullivan and Danny were still attacking him and then Jacob said get the table and the ladder so oh yeah that was when we know it was going to be a TLC story for the next season, next match, next event, and Basham came out and said, "Stop! I just got off the phone with Alexander Roth. You are not to cause any more chaos and havoc tonight. I just added you to the main event at um, Monday vs Madness, which is a t, which is a tag title match, but due to that." Injury, yeah, I had to change it at the last minute because the Demon Death Squad cannot defend their tag titles if they're injured. That's the that's the key issue. And Basham knew that. So it was gonna be and then ba Buff grabbed the microphone off of Basham and said, Listen to these people. Everyone wants a TLC match. We was all shouting TLC 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 and Basham had no choice but to grant that match. It was a TLC triple threat match. Tag tw triple threat match. It was, Originally it was going to be for the titles. The tag titles. But, but now they cannot do that now. Because both Xander and Damien are injured. Which is a pity. But luckily enough they got another wrestling team. The Beards. The lovely fuzzy beards, yeah, lovely beards team, yeah. I've got to love them, they're nice. The beards versus versus Project Mayhem versus the Entourage. Which is fair enough. Then Basham had to get Buff beaten up due to him being insubordinate, I think. Due to him probably grabbing the mic up interrupting Basham possibly. And then Basham announced another match for Buff for the 27th of May. It will be him versus Fentos. And I hope he kicks Fentos's butt, in my view. Anyway. Then came the main event, which was the handicap match. The three-on-one handicap match between the Entourage, Jay Morgan, and Bullet. They were all three of them were facing Bullet. Bullet came out, start giving us high fives, everything else, yeah. Got love Bullet. Bullet got in the ring, match got on the way. Bullet made mince me out of Jay Morgan. I mean Fabio Romano went first. And did he got injured during that bout? I got a feeling he got injured. I think he sustained an injury after that. He kept being slammed into the mat. 
I thought, oh, that can't be good for you, mate. If you're facing Bullet, you're going to get injured. And then the entourage, oh, the, we just had, took the right mickey out of Cuban Heat, saying, those from Primark. <laughs> and then Bullet just picked him up and took him over to the other side, dumped him there and says, stay here. <laughs> Cuban Heat, he was surprised. He was surprised. He was getting all the love and attention from all of us in the audience. All of us. Because we love him. Honestly, he's a funny bloke, Cuban Heat. In my, in my view, anyway. He's a funny bloke. Fabian Romano. He's next on, he's on my list, anyway. Cuban Heat as well. He's on my list when I wrestle him. But anyway. Bullet defeated them all. But actually, before he defeated them all... Basham got involved in the match. He made it a no disqualification match. And oh god. Bullet wanted him to get involved in the match. The gavel was almost being used. But Jay Morgan hit someone else with the gavel. Hit Fentos. <laughs> Fentos tried to get involved I think. But nah. But luckily. Bullet grabbed hold of. Jay Morgan. Cuban Heat and Fabian Romano and slammed them all. I mean, I know Zack Zodiac taught him that move because Zack can do that as well. So, good old Zack Zodiac. Good on you, mate. You did well teaching Bullet that because Bullet knew how to do that very well. He did it slam dunk. It was good. And Bullet picked up the win. Then at the end of the match, he said... Bullet cuts a promo, and we all know this. Even though when he was a bad guy, he does a promo every time. Then he went up, he said to Basham, Get in this ring right now. Buff, bring that briefcase out. And Buff brought out Bullet's World Heavyweight Championship belt. And he said, What kind of a monster are you prepared to be? And you, and he was challenging Basham to the vacant EWE Heavyweight Championship of the World, World Heavyweight Championship. And Bullet, that was a good promo he cut, and left Basham gobsmacked. And he picked up the belt, looked at it, and then he he smiled a little bit, and then he walked off with the belt because I know it's official it, I know it will be official now it will be Bullet versus Basham for the EWE World Heavyweight Championship and I'm looking forward to that I just know Basham's going to mess it up again somehow he's going to mess it up again I know he's going to put Arcadius in that match. Bullet won't want that. No. Unless he puts Damien in that match. But no, no, no. Something's going to be going wrong. I know something's going to go wrong. But it's TLC for you. It's a TLC event. Monday vs. Madness. Which I'm looking forward to. That That's what we all want. TLC match. And I'm hoping the special guest referee... Would be none other than Bo Bubba Ray Dudley. Bully Ray Dudley. Bully Ray. I hope he comes. He would love that. Knowing him, he would totally love it. Okay, that was the main event. Then Buff Broadside closes out the show. And I said to him, you're a better commissioner than Basham was. But I know for a fact... They might make Arcadius the next commissioner. If Basham challenges wrestles for the championship, he has to give up his right to become commis to be commissioner. He has to give up his commissionership side for a bit, and he has to make a temporary commissioner. And I've got a funny feeling I know who that was that is going to be. That might be William Hudson Alexander Moore to make Basham's life a living hell, or. Arcadius could come back as temp commissioner. 
because he was a good commissioner. Literally, he was. And I think Arcadius deserves to become commissioner of EWE because he knows how to get with the crowd. He knows how to handle everybody. He knows how to make everyone cheer his name. Arcadius. There you go, Arcadius. Did it for you, mate. Now, that's that sorted. Now, to, the, to solve this mystery on who took Chester. I've been thinking about this. Now, I know Pro Alexander Roth said Project Mayhem had nothing to do with that. But I know when a, when he's telling a lie, he might be telling a lie there because that's half a lie really. Because when the note said Chester is with us now and it takes one friend to portray another. And that sounded like a riddle. That's a riddle. And I know who's the Riddler. Alexander Roth is the Riddler. And I can tell he was lying about it. Because Ricardo Borg had been attacked by Roth before. The Wolf of Ball Street, Alexander Roth. I know Roth attacked Borg before. And I know he will do it again. So he couldn't help but feel probably feel angry for losing the light heavyweight championship to Ricardo Borg the way he did. He didn't like the way he lost to, to Borg. So, guessing... He, he probably blamed Chester for it. And I saw the beard lining and it was the exact same beard lining as Roth. But let's wait until the 27th of May. So I know Alexander Roth is going to be there. Probably for the TLC match. But we'll wait and see. But I did see somehow a wristband that was underneath the hoodie. It was a white wristband with a black stripe around it. So that means it could be Roth. It could be him. So yes, the same beard lining under that mask. It was the same beard lining. I saw it. Because he did that before. He re attacked Ricardo before in a car park with a black hoodie. With a hoodie. And who would wear a hoodie like that? Roth. That's the only suspect I'm pointing to. But I'm going to read the note and see if I can abbreviate it. It might be an anagram. It has to be an anagram within that. Just like in, like in Harry Potter the Chamber of Secrets, Tom Riddle. And then it, it then when you abbreviate it. Sorry guys, that's my dog. But anyway, thanks for watching the this episode of Wrestling with Round Man 28. Ring the bell please. Now, don't forget to click, comment, like, and subscribe to my channel, Terry Bartlett Round Man 28. And go to designmynight.com to get your tickets for Monday vs. Madness at the Bedford in Ballon. So, a big shout out to EWE. And see them again soon. I will see them again soon. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I might have a job there. You never know. Never know. At the moment, I'm carrying on with Generate Voices, with Generate Opportunities. Please go and support them, guys. There's plenty of job offers, plenty of job opportunities. So, feel free to get yourself a jobs. Get yourself some jobs. But, <clears throat> also, I will be doing more videos soon. I might be doing more videos sooner than you may think. Because I know Clan Lines probably due out this Saturday. And I'm possibly going to film that tour at Victoria. And there you go. So. <coughs> adios guys. Stay safe out there. <laughs>